great, you know, you know, great environment today. I want to thank all of you for coming. Um, you really were locked in today. You know, played a really good team, obviously well coached. I mean, a lot of respect for Seton Hall, Coach Willard. Uh, but I really want to thank you know, the community, the students that showed up. It's finals week this week, so it's a crazy week. It's a crazy week for our guys too. But we were locked in today. I loved our defense, you know, from the opening tip. And uh, every guy contributed. Every guy did what they needed to do. Two days to prepare for a really good team, so I was worried about that. But um, we were locked in from the opening tip. And uh, we played really well on both ends of the floor. Steve, how much was the fast start? Can you contribute to the, the fact that the building was like that? Well, I mean, the building was great. The most fans since, what, 2000? 2002. 2002. So most plays, you know, place was jumping you know from the beginning I thought our guys got off to a great start too which really helped you know, get the fans involved and you know, they make it a real tough place to play and when the rack was jumping like that all the good things about Rutgers University you saw today here everyone comes together we can do some really nice things and my team has come together they have to sacrifice guys you know Caleb was starting and he comes off the bench whatever you need coach you know, guys coming off the bench, our bench gave us tremendous energy tonight. They gave us some great minutes while our starters were resting, you know, and, and I thought really you know, just a great team win in a great environment. So getting off to a good start was, was important. Steve, defensively, what was the key to the game plan? It looked like you extended the pressure to half court and you ran some different guys and bigger guys at Powell. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, you know, we only had two days, so you can't reinvent the wheel, but we were real connected on the defensive end. So we had a lot of switches if we had to. You know, I thought we were, you know, real aggressive in all of our coverages. You know, they got really good players. Um, I didn't think they, you know, got comfortable looks, a couple open threes. I didn't love, but, um, you know, I thought thought for the most part we, you know, we were real aggressive on that end of the floor. And everyone subbed in, did a great job, everyone. So we got a lot of different looks for all their guards. Rob, can you take us through the two uh, alley-oops early in the game and what that did to the crowd? Uh, you know, it was just... First alley oop, that was just a play. We came out in the huddle, we said we we're going to run it. If it was there, throw it. You know, Miles found me. And then the second one, Gio just found me from like half court, tremendous pass. He put it up there for me to go get it, and I just came down, and the place exploded. Did you have a sense, and do you think it's a sense how big this game is as far as the tradition in Jersey? Seen um, all said that maybe some of their players didn't realize that game's going to be big. Yeah, you know, our guys were driven, they were determined. Um, we're a good basketball program. I think you saw today New Jersey basketball is good. New Jersey basketball is good. And, um, you know, and the environment, again, and these guys all played together. I think they knew, you know, when you're playing a ranked team with the best guard in the country, you know, it's a team like that. you, you got to be ready to play, and we're ready to play. Steve, to follow that up, the atmosphere here, and then also for instance, playing FTU today, how, how much of a benefit is that for the New Jersey schools to play one another, and how much more does a game like this contribute to potentially? Yeah, I mean, I just think when you get two really good programs, you know, we're, we're getting there too, and, and uh, uh, you know, bring all the people in the basketball community, you know, here to to Rutgers, vice versa. When we go to Seton Hall, it's good. You get to see some really good basketball. Hopefully, people keep coming and watch, you know, some really good programs continue to grow. Kevin uh, Willard said Powell uh, is being treated for a serious concussion. Did any of you guys see any anything from him that indicated that he wasn't quite right on the floor? Yeah, I hope he's all right. He's a heck of a competitor and a really good player. You never want to see anyone, uh, you know, be injured for a game. So I hope he gets he gets better soon. I know you have the, the one of the one game at a time mantra, but can, can this something like this be a turning point, be a spark for for yeah? The next I mean, month? you know, we're getting there. We had most people ever, you know, place was rocking. I think we got a good team. You know, this university is exploding. I keep saying that. Um, you know, it was nice to have everybody come together. You know, I know my son was even just took a final and he run over and ran over and our students were there. And, you know, all the different things that, you know, have to happen to make a place loud. And, you know, you got to have great administrators. you got to have great fans. you got to have cheerleaders, the bands, you know, all the different things that, that go into this thing. And then you got to have a team that's willing to sacrifice and take on roles and pass the ball and, you know, and to play with great energy, you know, and, and to do the things, and they practice hard. The last three, four practices, they've been really focused, you 
you know, really trying to find themselves. So I think these are great things, and I said we've got great momentum here at, at Rutgers. We really do, academically, basketball-wise, athletic-wise. So there's a lot of good things happening, so we can continue that trend. Steve, what do you think of the way your players attack the glass and also the 50-50 balls in this game? Yeah, I mean, I thought we did an awesome job. How about the backboard numbers? You know, they're big. They're one of the biggest teams in the country, you know, physically. And, uh, you know, I thought from the start we really, you know, that was a very much a concern for me. After watching all the tapes of them, they, they, they tend to get a lot of long rebounds too because they're so tall. Um, you know, but I thought we were locked in and we stayed attached, you know, the whole time. It helped us run, especially in the first half too, those long rebounds. Steve, Kevin mentioned the cross-season experience. Uh, is it an impact on game both on your team and against his as well. What have you seen from him now between the Wisconsin game and today coming into the lineup? How much more response is he have given? Well, I mean, you know, this is just mature. You know, he gives us some maturity about him. and you know, He can really shoot the ball. I think he's as good a shooter um, as there is. So we can post him. We can do a lot of different things. But, uh, his maturity is really, you know, it's really helped. He gets locked in. He comes to practice every day. The team, they love him. The teammates, I think these guys are really, you know, Enjoying, enjoying what he brings, and he's figuring it out too. He's figuring it out too with a new team and stuff. So it's been a nice addition. Guys, what was it? Any of the players? What was it like uh, collecting that trophy? Gia 